In this movie, we're going to show how a profile tool can be used to create a 3D relief that will allow us to have sharp inside corners. We can then use a combination of cutting the 3D relief in a single line straight cut using the profile tool to create a simulated five part raised panel door. Now, let's start off by taking our, our profile tool here and extracting the profiles we're going to use for the relief. And I just made a copy by holding my control key down. Then I'm going to hit explode to just turn this into a few different contours and then we can get rid of those extra profiles. Um, now I'm going to take this from a negative profile and convert it to a positive profile using the mirror tool. And uh, we will be able to go into the material using a different one of the methods of modifying a relief. But I do want to keep my profile as a positive one when I extract it from the tool. Now if I zoom out here, I have an outer rectangle of this door and I have a eyebrow shape top with the sharp corners bottoms. And it might be helpful to get an idea of what this would look like if I was to just cut this with a 2D tool. If I just did a plunge and cut around this shape. And uh, what it would do, it, it would radius these corners here based upon the radius of this part. And I'm going to uh, go to here with my snaps of middle and end selected. I'm going to measure this distance and see that it's 0 0.2475. 0 0.2475. So let's come here and take this part. Go to the fillet tool. I have a radius input of 0.2475. I'm going to collect this, click on this part, and we can see the, the radius being formed there and hit apply. So this is going to be the shape we need to really simulate what this profile is going to look like as it cuts through there. Now I'm going to take this outer border here and put a flat profile here, 0.75 in thickness, 100 resolution, and hit apply. This is going to be building from zero of the relief up. And so you do want to make sure that all your geometries and profiles are at zero when you're doing something like this. Next, we're going to come here and use the extrusion tool. And we're going to use our wizard here to say select the contour we want to be extruded, which is our part here. Hit my, my forward button, select the path to follow. Well, there are no mitered corners here. I do want the bottom middle of this profile to sweep along this part. Now I'm going to do a subtract so it would actually cut into the material and hit my green check mark and I should see a nice representation here of my 3D part. Okay, now I can come here and um, do a more of a simulated panel here or, or do a, a sharper corner panel and this is where I have my original relief where we have our sharp lines here. So I'm going to take my relief and hit add. Everything else will be the same. Okay, now I'm going to take my relief. And again, you have to select a relief before you go to modify it. So I'm going to go to select relief, extrude. It tells me select the contour to be extruded, which is here. Select the path to follow. I'm going to subtract. And miter the corners are going to be the changes I make here. And this will be the actual relief I'm going to use to create my toolpath so that instead of getting this result, I can come in here and in and, and these particular areas, I can sharpen these corners up a little bit. And uh, you might even be able to just do one continuous path and then and then to come on here and do these sharp corners afterwards. Uh, or you might find that you want to stop in a particular area and then do them as a 3D only. That's something that a little testing would tell. So now we, we've got the relief and we have it as the same thickness of the part. We have an idea of what the profile tool would look like as it's cutting through there. It's just a matter of deciding where do we want to cut. And, and you know, I don't want to cut a bunch of 3D areas that I don't have to. I just want it to be right, right in these areas where I don't have the, the, the sharp corners. And that starts more or less here and up and here and over. So we can make this as limited as an area as we want. Uh, the way I would go ahead and create this area is let's come here and create a, a new layer. I'm going to call this the corner layer. All right, and they're going to make this our active layer. All right, looks like we have another shape here kind of out of, out of place. So let's get rid of that one. 
All right, now I've got my inner profile here. Actually, we're gonna to go to the blank layer and turn this one on. <clears throat> I've got my inner profile. So what I'm gonna do is come here and do an outline. And uh, my total distance here is, is uh, 1.25 inches. So I'm making half the distance go to the inside. I'm gonna say inline square, apply. And I'm gonna go here again. And I'm gonna say outline and then hit apply. So this is going to give me an, a, a distance that's the same width here as this part that I can just toolpath right where necessary. And uh, now, you know, there's, there's a number of ways you could do this. I'm just going to draw some 2D lines and, and I'm going to come here. You could start right on this corner and go over, start here and go up. And that would give you a pretty good little corner there. Again, if I wanted to do that here, I'm going to start on this corner, hold my shift key down just to make sure I go past the edge there. This would probably be the minimal amount you would want to cut. Now I'm just going to turn this area off for a second. And uh, now I just have my, my 2D shapes. Uh, so let's go in here and let's use the jigsaw tool and let's create a jigsaw shape in these two areas. All right, now you see I have my, my part here. And these are my two little corner shapes. I'm gonna use the mask where my toolpath applies. Uh, I'm gonna make a copy of these. So I'm gonna go to my, my mirror tool. Let's see here. And I'm gonna draw straight up. And by using copy by line and copy, I can precisely place on these other sides the exact size shape I need to complete these corners. So now I'm going to select my corners. Now before I apply any toolpath here, I'm going to move these down to the bottom. So we're going to select this relief and then go down to the, move this to the bottom of the plate. And now that's inside the material. Now I'm going to select my relief and there's four little corners. So we're not gonna have too much 3D tool pathing here. And I'm gonna to go to the hatch fill. I found that hatch fill gives the best result for something like this. There's just some pretty small radiuses. So I'm gonna go with about a one and a, a 16th inch ball nose tool here. So about one and a half millimeter ball. I'm gonna say a depth of 0.4 inches. It's only gonna to go to as deep as where that surface is. I'm gonna tell it to go over cut. So it just goes to the very edge of that part. Um, and now we're going to go here and specify our fill. So I'm going to do a 90% fill. Now it might be uh, necessary to do a little rough tool here first where you'd have a second tool and then offset it from the surface. And that's a little bit of 3D tool pathing uh, type of work. So let's come here and say, all right, we're going to choose a, say a three millimeter tool here. And we're going to have that one offset from the surface. Uh, let's see, point 0.7, so it doesn't get too close to the surface there. And then our feed rates could be whatever, whatever you want on that one, whatever the desire might be, um, based upon the material. Now we're going to come here and just hit OK. And our tool paths are applied right in those corners. So uh, now a combination of, of going around here with this 2D tool all the way and then cutting these corners with this 3D tool path would produce the kind of re result you're looking for and in terms of giving a sharp corner there. And let's come here one more time. Let's just make sure that everything's looking all right here. So I'm just drawing a couple little shapes here. The purpose for drawing these shapes is just to mask where my simulation is going to be. There's no point in simulating a big area if I just want to check on these two small areas. So having so you selected contours and mask will allow me to do that. I'm going to even bump up my DPI here to 450. That's really going to give me some, some good view of this. And I don't even think I did my toolpath order. But I was just showing you how you would... Uh, apply the 
the uh, rough tool in the clean tool, I'd need to come here and order that so that it does the the clean tool first and the rough tool second. I mean, the rough tool first and the the detailed tool second. But the the real idea here is to show that we're going to get this little mitered corner here, um, just based based upon the same exact profile as the tool, and cut with this little sixteenth uh, inch ball. So it's going to give us a nice sharp inside corner there. Um, one of the differences is going to be that you are using a radius, you know, you might lose a little bit of a, of a radius. If that has a sharp corner on your profile tool, this is going to have a little radius. If you wanted to go back and then to just this area and clean that up with a, with a sharp corner tool, you could do that. It's just the more tools you introduce, the more chance you have for some difference in, in a Z orientation showing up. So uh, that's just an area to be a little bit careful of just because the less tools you have to send through there, the the less or the more likely it'll blend in a little better but how how much detail there you would want would uh would have some impact there but this is how you would be able to uh, use a combination of a of a profile a straight cut profile tool and a 3d relief to create sharp cornered five-part mdf door simulated mdf door